Although K-pop idols keep getting younger and younger, most of them are adults, meaning they should be treated as such. If you spend time on K-pop social media, you will notice a general infantilization of idols. Today, I discuss why that is, why it's bad, and how it harms everyone involved. I had my K-pop phase, which I like to pretend is over now, even though it still lingers. And during that phase, I was pretty involved in K-pop spheres. I was on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, and more. It's safe to say that I know quite a bit about K-pop fans and their behaviors, considering I was an avid one for a while. I was mostly a fan of girl groups, but one of the boy groups that had caught my eye was BTS. As all of you know, BTS has one of the biggest fandoms on the planet. Millions of posts are made about them every year, and they've captured the hearts of many through their music and charming personas. And of course, you can't get to the top without sufficient promo, so naturally, BTS have had a lot of fan signs. And I assume that if you've clicked on this video, you have some general knowledge regarding K-pop. But if you don't, allow me to introduce you to fan signs. They are meetings scheduled by K-pop idol agencies where fans line up to meet their idols, talk to them, get their signatures, give them gifts, including cute costumes that the idols can put on. When I was a fan, there was a viral clip of a BTS fan meeting. The youngest member, Jungkook, was approached by a fan who gave him a costume to try on. The thing is, the costume was a baby bonnet. Jungkook appears to reluctantly put it on and he seems to be very embarrassed afterwards. This caught the attention of fans, so much so that there was an article written about it. Some fans thought that other fans should stop babying Jungkook so much and that him being the youngest wasn't a reason for fans to treat him like a kid, especially considering that he felt clearly uncomfortable by it. This situation caused me to notice how K-pop fans tend to baby their idols way too much. Not just by making them wear baby costumes, but by every other method imaginable too. So let's discuss the why. Why do idols get babied by their fans so much? Why is it a common occurrence you rarely see with other fandoms? and is considered ridiculous everywhere but in the K-pop sphere. Starting with the most obvious answer, fans love their idols. Naturally, they would want to baby them. It stems from a feeling of deep fondness and appreciation. As a thanks for making great music and presenting yourself in a way that is palatable and enjoyable, I will look after you and I will forgive you. I will treat you like a baby. Because of how close fans feel to their idols, Fans want to assume their idols are cute, innocent children who can do no harm. It is a comforting thing that during a world of stress, you can always log on to Twitter at the end of the day and catch up on your favorite idols who seem to exude a positive aura no matter what troubles there are in the world. They are a constant when everything else is unstable, so you show them love in the only way you know how, caring for them. But still, that doesn't completely answer why. I mean, Scarlett Johansson supplies comfort to her fans with her movies, right? But you don't see nearly as many people call her a little meow meow. Why is this sort of affection typically only reserved for K-pop fans? Well, let's discuss the parasocialism. Cambridge Dictionary defines parasocial relationships as a connection between a person and someone they do not know personally which describes every relationship between a fan and someone who is not aware of their existence. All fans have one parasocial relationship or another, be it a book character, an athlete, or in this case, a K-pop idol. Every fandom has them. But why is it most prevalent in the K-pop industry? The answer is pandering. K-pop agencies go through hell and back marketing their idols to be the most approachable they can be. Idols are given a cute, friendly appearance, they are encouraged to interact with stands on social media sites, designed especially for them, they talk to stands during fan meetings and video calls, and they are overall expected to be very friendly and even initiate physical touch with them. Mommy, you're cute. Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> Call me mommy. Oh, mom. <laughs> um, mommy. Sorry. Your mom? <laughs> I'm your son? Mm? Yes. Wow. Mm. Call me mommy again, okay? Okay, mommy. Mm. Oh, and let's not forget the literal dating bans placed on idols 
which prohibits them from forming romantic or sexual relationships and making it a scandal when they do. It's obvious that every aspect of K-pop is designed to be as marketable as possible to fans so that they can see their idols as their very own and make them stake a claim on idols as if they are toys, not human beings, so they can keep returning to them like one would a lover. But parasocialism aside, there's another more alarming reason. I don't think it's done with bad intentions, but it harms the idols nonetheless. The reason being stereotypes. You know, Asian people are cute. While it may not seem offensive to call a category of people cute, stereotypes, even when considered a compliment, are harmful. As a research paper published in 2013 aptly puts it, the more people are willing to entertain sweeping generalizations about groups based on social categories, the more likely they should become to believe these differences are a result of something fundamentally and naturally different about the group. Essentialist beliefs can only arise if people accept the veracity of a claimed group difference. That is, if it is accepted rather than challenged. Given this, if positive stereotypes about a specific group are less likely to be coded as biased or trigger negative emotions, they may be a particularly effective means, compared to both negative stereotypes and baseline conditions, of enhancing beliefs that a group is genetically, biologically, or otherwise naturally different. The research paper found that exposure to positive stereotypes led to increased application of prejudicial beliefs. Now that we know how even positive stereotypes can contribute to a harmful culture, we discuss how it not only harms K-pop idols, but Asian people as a whole. An opinion paper written by R.O. Kwan titled Stop Calling Asian Women Adorable and published in the New York Times puts it perfectly. There are innumerable times professional colleagues, people I barely know, strangers even, have told me that my skin is alabaster and my hair silk-like and shiny. My skin is not especially pale, and even if it were, this would be weird and diminishing. It's objectifying. Cute. Adorable. I wish I could adopt you. Pixie. These are things said by feminists, writers, and people who take time out of their weekends to attend a literary festival. A lot of progressive people, and would-be well-meaning people, many of whom I imagine would be dismayed to learn anything they've done could be thought racist, because that's what it is. However well-intentioned, it's racism. So while treating your idol like a baby who is incapable of making decisions for themselves may not look like something that is offensive, it very much is. And all it does is reinforce the stereotype that Asian people are sweet, innocent creatures, inept at creating art meant to be taken seriously, and unqualified to be treated like an adult. It's derogatory. And now, you might hit me with the, oh, but K-pop is meant to be cute. It's not bad to call a spade a spade. While you might be right for some part, you're still not looking at the full picture. Because even when agencies market their idols as sexy, mature, or grown up, there still remains a culture of fans treating them like babies. It's especially bothersome when idols try to distance themselves from the baby image, but fans refuse to let it go either way. Like when idols make songs about sex and fans still treat them like babies. Or when an idol is exposed to be smoking and fans get outraged as if this is not a personal choice that the idol made. Basically acting like they're silly little babies that don't know anything about the adult world. On the other hand, in 2023, a member of the Twice Girl group, Young, posted a photo of herself at a cafe. There might not have been anything concerning about the picture were it not for the fact that she was wearing a t-shirt with a hate symbol on it. Young is a grown woman. She does not present herself as cute. She has a tattoo of a naked woman on her arm for God's sake. She's grown. However, people reprimanded her for this, but fans rushed to her defense saying she didn't know any better. Education in South Korea is not like that of the Western world. Whether or not what you consider what Che Young did offensive, why is that always the argument used to defend K-pop idols? They didn't know any better. I mean, are K-pop idols not adult humans with access to the World Wide Web? Are they not culturally enriched people who watch the news when something important happens? Why are we so quick to treat them like children who don't know any better? And assuming that Che Young actually didn't know how it could be considered offensive, 
Is that really a solid excuse? In my opinion, not knowing any better is harmful on its own, and it should not be used an ex as an excuse, but rather it should be something to be ashamed about. In this day and age, we have the world at our fingers, just to tap away. It is so easy to be educated, and it's our responsibility to know, especially when you are a famous person with millions of fans who look up to you. Not knowing simply doesn't cut it. We see this argument used again and again, not just for Young, but for any idol who does something that might be considered distasteful. You probably know about the people are volunteering in to protest against the happening in Palestine. Starbucks is probably the brand people are the most, due to the CEO's avid support, both verbal and monetary, of the occupation. I'm not here to educate you about. There are thousands of way more well-informed and detailed videos on the platform explaining the situation in great detail. However, there's something to be said about how there has been a rise in K-pop idols posting their Starbucks drinks on their social media. The second that Starbucks started losing profits, if that's not suspicious to you, I don't know what is. But besides the fact that it's allegedly under the table advertising done for Starbucks, fans once again used the they don't know any better argument for idols who were posting themselves with Starbucks products, once again infantilizing the idols and treating them like kids who are not capable of making informed decisions for themselves. Personally, I find the idea of anyone alive since October 7th not knowing about the boycotts extremely hard to believe, but again, let's entertain the idea that they really don't. But I ask again, why is that considered a valid excuse? Why do we think being uneducated is fine and dandy? Because I repeat the statement, in this day and age, not knowing is destructive. You should know. It is your duty as a person with humanity and especially as a famous person to educate yourself. The general idea that idols don't know any better or that their every move is strategized by their agency actually harms idols more than it benefits them. By babying them, you are stripping them of their autonomy. It also harms you, the fan, in many ways. For one, you keep on building this one-sided relationship with an idol who is not aware of your existence spending money on them and giving them your undying love. They continue to make mistakes and you keep going back to them because you don't believe that they can do any wrong. Humans make mistakes. It's normal that even celebrities make mistakes. So why do we grant K-pop idols of all people immunity against backlash? Because of our fetishized idea regarding Asians? Because of the infantilization we approach them with? Lord knows I've seen Western artists receive 10 times the backlash from fans and non-fans alike regarding problems they cause. I mean, when Billie Eilish got accused of queer baiting, which was such a stupid thing for people to get mad about, especially considering that she turned out to be bisexual, everyone and their moms, including K-pop fans, showed up to her witch hunt. But K-pop is notorious for queer baiting, and no one bats an eyelash? K-pop fans cannot handle any form of criticism when it comes to their idols. This idol can't sing. It's okay for them to sound bad once in a while. They said something offensive. They didn't mean it like that. You people are misunderstanding. They supported a bad cause. You guys don't get it. That's Korean culture. This song literally sounds like it was produced on a construction site. You'll get it once you listen to it a hundred times. This idol did cultural appropriation. Blame the stylist, not the idol. They wore a hate symbol, they didn't know any better. Even though we never grant Western celebrities disgrace. All these excuses are impossible to take seriously. They are used when kindergartners make mistakes, not fully grown adults. I occasionally enjoy K-pop, okay? It would be hypocritical of me to say that it's all bad. And many fans act like this because it is in a way comforting for them. But it's about time we stop looking at idols like children who aren't mature and only deserve a slap on the hand when they do something bad. Never criticizing someone means they never grow. I find it really strange that obsessive fans lose their mind when their idol is dating someone, but when they do something actually bad, it's fine. Seriously, I urge K-pop fans to stop looking at grown celebrities as children. This babying harms the idol by taking away their autonomy 
and making it seem like they are helpless pets at the hands of the machine. It harms the fan by encouraging endless forgiveness when someone commits a mistake and encouraging parasocial relationships, and it harms Korean and Asian people as a whole by perpetuating the cute, innocent Asian stereotype. No one benefits from this. Alright, I've been yapping long enough, it's time for me to wrap this video up. I know that this video was kind of messy and all over the place, and kind of disorganized even though I've been working really hard on it, but I hope that my message was conveyed and that you understand what I was trying to imply. I hope that you enjoyed this video or maybe that you learned something new. If you agree or disagree, feel free to leave a comment as to why. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe because it helps me out a lot and I, I'm trying to reach 50 subscribers, as pathetic as it sounds. So, thank you so much for clicking on this video, especially if you've made it this far, you have no idea how grateful I am. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye!